It's the 2K Sports Pregame Show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. Ernie Johnson here with my esteemed colleagues, Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. Tonight, it'll be the Atlanta Hawks going up against the Boston Celtics. Taking a look at the Celtics, a strong stretch of play for this team, winning six of their last seven. They're playing at a high level, no lack of confidence going into tonight's game. And Kenny, part of the early season is about making adjustments. For some, it's new personnel. For others, it's getting situated in a new city and a new arena. Tell us a little bit about that process. Well, you know, players and coaches have been together for a while. They have the huge advantage because they know what to expect and they know the process. I've gone through a lot of changes in my career. Each day you just try to get a little better as a team and you hope by the end it works out. Uh, joining us courtside, a guy who's always in mid-season form, Kevin Harlan. Nice, Ernie, nice. Let's take him back. The sights of the Atlanta skyline as we are here in the heart of Georgia. It's an All-Eastern Conference matchup in today's game as the Celtics come into town for this one. Welcome to the Tuesday night edition of the NBA on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan alongside Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. Take a look at the Hawks. A great start to the season for them, notching three wins to tip it off. And I think for the Hawks, they've been slightly off the mark here early in the season. Not awful by any stretch of the imagination, but just not quite at the level many had predicted. Looks to me like they've still got a few kinks to work out that they weren't able to square away in the preseason, but they'll be in their groove sooner than later. And now the opening lineup for Boston. Thomas is out there with Brown, then it's the Cobra, then it's the Kid, and it's Lee in at the force line. Whoa, whoa, that'll wake you up. <laughs> is he an athlete or what? No doubt about it. It's almost as if he lives in the air, and dunks like that have become quite commonplace. Now here's Thomas. Brown outside. Six to shoot. That's good from Thomas on the assist by Brown. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas. I mean, that was a freebie. Boston on D. Their last encounter was in Boston. In the last meeting of these two teams, they were really sharp defensively, disrupting the flow of their offense and causing a ton of turnovers. Very satisfying performance, Greg, and one they'll look to repeat tonight. And they ended up winning it going away. Boston took a lot of steps forward last season with their coach, Brad Stevens. Still, though, their defense was near the middle of the road. That will need some tweaking. Yeah, and you could say that that seemed to be the limiting factor, Kevin, in how far they eventually went. Strange given how several years ago they were an offensive juggernaut. And the Hawks with possession here, following the three-pointer by Boston. They get a hand on it, and Young kicks to Gallinari. Fires the three. No good. So the Celtics will take it the other way. They're coming off that win against the Nets. Yeah, the confidence just exuding in that performance on the offensive end. I mean, really illustrates how this team clicks when guys are communicating and executing as a cohesive unit. Yeah, roadkill is hard to get in this league. I mean, to be a great NBA team, you've got to be able to have that kind of performance on the road. Focused, purposeful, and productive. Really solid. One shot. One shot, Kevin. Now Young, he picked up 18 points in their last win against the Cavaliers in Cleveland. Yeah, and talk about his scoring. I mean, Kevin, with the defense trying to pressure him, he did a good job of getting them to overcommit and getting himself to the line. Now, here is Young. He's one of the better scorers in the league, averaging almost 25 points a game. Thomas against Young. Outside Thomas. And there's the pass to the Cobra. Here's the kid. Really played well against Brooklyn in his last outing. It's deflected, and he gets it back. Three-pointer. Good. The kid's got nine. 
They've wasted no time settling into their offense. Yeah, they're lasered in. I mean, really making the most of their possessions. Now, here is Young. And here's Gallinari. Pass to Young. There's the screen. Passes it to the monster. They get it back to end the run. Good D by Lee. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the D just enough to keep him out of rhythm. And he gets it to go. Boy, they've gone on this run, and ball movement has been a big key. It really has, Clark. The defense unable to react as quickly as necessary in terms of dealing with their passing. Now, here is going on. He's a good contributor to his team, averaging about 10 and a half points a game. Offline with his three. Kevin, I didn't like that defensive effort at all, but they're lucky he missed it. Yeah, you hope that's not indicative of the type of D they're going to play because if they do, they're going to have struggles with him tonight. Here's the Cobra. Off target there. That would have pushed the lead to double digits. And that one goes in as he is fouled. It'll be three points if he converts at the line. Yeah, exceptional play there to take the bump and still get it to fall. I like to call that stick to Greg. Getting everything he possibly could out of that play. Mm. Nicely done. <laughs> Good call. The Hawks shooting their first free throw of the evening. One shot. Find the lane. Find the lane. One shot. Boy, I tell you, last season was a big one for the Hawks and Coach Budenholzer. Their dominant season won him multiple Coach of the Month titles, and eventually he won the Coach of the Year award. Now here's Lee, and looking at his production, he averages a little more than seven points a game. Can't hit the free throw line jump. Not sure what, what the D was doing there. Clearly a breakdown. You can ill afford to give a guy like him that good a look. Here's Collins and Boston with the rebound. It was pretty obvious, I thought, great that, that Budenholzer was the deserved coach of the year. I mean, Steve Kerr, there are a lot of good names you could put in there. But what he's done taking the Hawks to the top of the East, a uh, few saw that coming. I, I agree with you. I mean, he has transformed this Hawks team over the past couple years, has a wonderful team game. And you know, obviously, a lot of influence coming from Pop when he was with San Antonio, but he is really, I think, redefining how the game of basketball is being played at the pro level. He is just tearing it up this court. That lead's not going anywhere while he's this hot. And Bogdanovich kicks to Collins. The high post shot, no good off the front iron. Tell you what, they haven't wasted any time getting into the swing of things on the boards. And even this early, that's a good omen for the rest of the game. Now, here's Thomas. His last outing, he had eight points. Lee outside. It's Brown with the drive, and it's Boston with another. Just such a well-rounded offensive player. He's got a little bit of everything. The Hawks trail by nine. Young pass to Bogdanovich. Here's the monster, covered by Lee. There's a screen. The feed now to Young. To the paint. Got a piece of it. Lee with the steal. It's Brown on the wing. And it's blocked. Here's Bogdanovich. He's guarded by Thomas. Ball's not loose. didn't get quite enough under that one. The Atlanta Hawks coming to this one after the win against Cleveland. And how about the accuracy that was on display from three-point range in that game? They were lethal. Yeah, splashing those threes as they did really allowed them to continuously deflate that crowd and keep them at bay. Boy, that was a nice road win for them, no doubt. So for the Hawks, Capella's checked in, and it's Corver in for Gallinari. And then for Boston, 
Al Horford. He's checked in for the Cobra. And it's T.J. Warren in for Lee. So the Celtics call timeout their first. I think he just sees some things that can be improved and wants to get everybody back on the same page. And usually that, to me, is a good use of the timeout. I mean, if there's something that he's noticed that can give his team a lift, um, I think he's got to try to take advantage of that. the Celtics with the ball. They're on a 17 to 6 run. Thomas against Young. Horford with a screen on Young. Thomas goes in. And now Young running the floor all by himself. Watch out. That assist. That's a pair of teammates that are clearly on the same page. Austin leading by seven. Look at his contract, and Kyle Korver is a steal, Clark, at four years and $24 million. Yeah, but he's a guy not only who can shoot it, clearly, but a good team defender as well. I think he's a really solid, complete player and a pro's pro in terms of the locker room. Yeah, it seems when he's on the floor, the Hawks a different team offensively. No question. Now, here is Young. Feeds to Williams. Here's Collins, and it's good assisting on the play was Williams. And now just a five-point Celtic lead. And he should thank the key for those two points. Nobody paid much attention to him on that play. Here's the kid, guarded by Corver, picked by Horford. Here's the double team with Corver, and the wide-open shot from Warren finds himself wide open and drills it. You know, the rest of the D can be stretched a little thin when the double team's in place like that. Outside, Williams. Pass to Corbin. There's a good screen to the middle. Young for three. The shot is off. And it's Boston the other way. Well, not really his best quarter as far as scoring. Let, let's see if he can eventually get back on track. Thomas dishes to Horford. Unloads from nine. The rebound by Young. The Hawks trail by seven. He kicks to Williams. From the arc. And it's Young. That time on the assist from Williams. Young's got five. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Yeah, and it's really fun to see that kind of unselfishness. Really hard not to appreciate all the assists they've racked up. And the basket by Thomas. Only took them a few seconds to answer the three ball with one of their own. Greg, we've got a three-point battle taking shape here. He's definitely shaking up. They're using the timeout to let their trainer take a look at it. And now the first timeout called here for the Hawks. Certainly the biggest surprise last year, Clark, was the play of the Atlanta Hawks. You would have picked them to win the East at the start of the season. Well, they did it, and they earned it. Um, the Hawks didn't have any superstars on their roster, but they won with solid team play. Checked in for Collins. And Tabo Cephalosha subbed in for Young. Marcus Smart's checked in for Boston.
The Hawks trail by seven. And for the Hawks, they did end up with four All-Stars last season. As you said, it was all about how they worked together as a team. Corver, no luck. Boston's gone three or four on three-pointers in the first quarter. Doing well from long range. Round with it. Now defended by Corver. Brown kicks to Smart. And Horford, here we go. Here's Brown. Rebounded by Shuffalosha. And you know, around the NBA, the league recognized the Hawks were a complete team. Everybody played their role superbly. The NBA named all five of their starters the player of the week last year in an unprecedented move. Here's Zeller. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Well, last year, Tyler Zeller both started and came off the bench, showed he could be an effective player even when playing heavy minutes. Yeah, and if you look at the games that he played as a starter, he increased his usage, and it didn't bother his production okay, at all. Two shots. Two shots. And that one falls for Zeller. And for Zeller last season, his numbers were the same or better as a starter. His scoring picked up a touch. Still had a great field goal percentage, too. So really solid production in his first couple of years. And so Zeller nails both of them. And I think the big thing for Zeller was that he found his role in the league. He knows he'll be an energy guy who has to make the most of his touches. And to his credit, he is nothing but a positive force on the floor. And the best of good. And the Celtics lead by seven. And that's just showing off right there, guys. I mean, he is too good with that crossover. Williams gets to Corbin. There's the dish to Capella. There's the pick. A pass to Court. Five to shoot. Atlanta needs to get off a shot here. Here's Capella, and it's good. With time running down on the shot clock. Capella's got his first points of the game. Man, can you always depend on him or what to lead you to the right place with that pass? Money. Here's the kid. Rebounded by Corver. Terrific job that time defending at the rim. I mean, it's not an easy task stopping that fella when he's headed to the bucket like that. Good job. Now here is Cephalosha. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. Nice stroke from long range. And if he keeps getting those opportunities, he better take them. Brown against Corver. There's the pick. Brown, the pass to Smart. Horford with it. He provides a good amount of offense for the team, averaging around 11 and a half points a game. He feeds it to Ward. That one's no good. That makes him one for two. The Hawks trailer. Williams dishes to Corver. Back to Williams. From outside the arc. And Boston with the rebound. Outstanding perimeter defense there. That was a well-contested shot. Yeah, and you know he takes a lot of pride in his defense. There are no easy threes if he's on. Just a late reaction there from the defense, and he is always going to finish that one. The train. to finish off the quarter. How did he get that one to go? I don't know, but I think that's a 2% shot. Yeah. He'd make two out of 100 Boys. of those if you gave them to him. Yeah. Hola, hola. And now, and we got a close game here as we get back to the second quarter. And what do you guys think about Boston here in this one? I, I just think that 
from an intensity standpoint, their defense has really been the key. It's been the catalyst as they've been able to disrupt their opponent's offense. Absolutely. I mean, they've been much more intense defensively. And their defense not only has been intense, but it's been swarming and saran wrap like. Celtics with the lead on the floor for Boston. Thomas is the point with Bradley into his side. Warren is out there with David Lee, and it's the Cobra in at the five down low. Now here's Thomas. Lock at six. Let's it go from the wing, and they call over the back here. Too much content. Boy, did he go hard to the boards, but clearly went over the back in doing it. Yeah, kudos for the effort. I always love that kind of effort, but he was just a little overzealous. And the Hawks with possession here. They trail by one. At the conclusion of this game, they're off to Minnesota where they'll take on the Timberwolves. And that one will start off a three-game road trip for the team. Passes it to the Monster. The three. A rebound by the Celtics. Their biggest lead of the game was nine. Warren with the ball. He's against Young. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. The Celtics have made their only other free throw attempt today in an earlier trip to the line. First one falls. You know, there was plenty to be happy about last year in Atlanta with the way the Hawks played. One sour note, though, was that the team was viewed as a potential buy for Seattle groups. The Hawks making a switch here. Collins has checked in. All three throws, good for Warren. Well, last season, the Hawks not only had a great year on the floor as they were the top seed in the Eastern Conference, but they had a pretty good day at the bank, too. They sold for a, a nice price. Looks like the team is going to stay in Atlanta, where it, where it belongs. Yeah, and that's great news for Atlanta, and they were rewarded with a terrific season. A group, including Grant Hill, purchased the Hawks and obviously will keep that group in Atlanta for many years to come. Shot clock at two. From the arc. The shot is off. So the Celtics will take it the other way. Outside Brantley. We're about a minute and a half into the second quarter now. He dishes it to Thomas. Let's it fly. Offensive rebound from past the arc. And Bradley gets it to go. And the Celtics lead by six. There you go again. A nice kick out after the D had collapsed on it. And Young kicks to Bogdanovich. Two minutes now played in the second quarter. They set the pick. It's Young on the wing. He's guarded by Thomas. And once again off the mark by Atlanta. Celtics leading by six. Shakes off the strong D and gets to the bucket for two. Thomas got seven points. They are not rotating nearly quickly enough on defense down low. Got to get quicker there. Just no resistance on the interior. Now, here is Young. He's got five. Here is Bogdanovich. Pass to the monster. And cut it from 19 feet away. And how about the bounce pass there being used to perfection?
Now a timeout called by Boston. Last season, the Celtics had a solid 19 and 22 road record, Clark. Not the 500 mark most teams want, but a very good effort from a young team, and no one really expected that. Yeah, and you think about this team that's still growing and has a lot of youth. I mean, that kind of road record, very impressive. Their fans should be feeling pretty good about what the future holds with this group. And thinking back on the Celtics, on the road, their away record doesn't tell the whole story. They, they won their last seven road games in that tremendous playoff push. All right, let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. Hey, guys. Well, Brad Stevens had some advice for the team over that last break. The strategy included running the offense through Thomas. Coach is looking for him to take on a lot of responsibility when they've got the ball to be a leader at the offensive end. They're not going to wait for halftime. They want those adjustments to have an impact right away. Over to you, Kevin. Thank you, Doris. Now about three minutes gone in the second quarter of basketball. To the inside. Kicks it out to Bradley. And another basket for Boston. Another away from home note for the Celtics. They were 7-1 and one in road games against the rest of their division. Their role play was the driving factor as to why they made the playoffs. Now here is Young. Five points in the game. Got a hand on it. A slight advantage for them in the rebound department, but that oftentimes is all it takes. Especially, Greg, when you're scoring the ball at a decent clip the way they have. I mean, they've done exactly what's necessary to take the lead. Here's Thomas. He has seven. Kicks it to Lee. Off target there. That would have pushed the lead to double digits. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, I mean, a cold stretch offensively. They desperately need a basket. Young's shot is off. It just hasn't been a very good day for him, guys. They need him to start burying some of those. Thomas kicks to Bradley. Collins grabs the miss. I guess even he has to miss one of those once in a while. And that one's good. Bogdanovich has got his second bucket of the night. He's one of the best in the league at that. Even with just a tiny sliver, he always seems to find a way to get it up and in. Dishes it to Warren. Thomas gets a wide open look. Boston again missing. He hit a three in the first, but so far has been unable to capitalize here in this quarter. Now, here is Young. And the pass to the monster. Just five on the clock. Let's it go from 11. Rebounded by the Celtics. Lee's got three rebounds so far in the game. Lee sets a screen for Brett. Pass to Lee. There's a screen. And he makes good on the layup. A defensive breakdown there, no doubt about it. I mean, he's a guy you have to be focused on defensively. Thomas against Young. Passes it to the monster. Gallinari in the corner. And it's off from three-point range. Celtics leading by eight. Thomas with the ball. And Young picks him up defensively. Thomas passes to the goal. And he caught that pass in full stride on his way to the big slam. Maybe could have tried for a more memorable dunk than that. And we know he's capable of those memorable dunks. Yeah, and, and when he's got a lead, like that why not take a few chances a lot more engaging and entertaining than just doing the old ho-hum one-hander here's what boston's What's going up? with right now up, selinger's checked in for lee and it's the kid in for war Boston Celtics figured to be near the bottom of the league last year in many ways. They outperformed a lot of people's expectations. And by no means were they a contender at any point, but they very well could be ahead of themselves in terms of the rebuilding process. Time called here. The Hawks decide to talk it over. And with the Celtics being a surprise threat near the end of last season, 
Even their losses were close games. The Hawks trail by 11. Young outside. There's the pick. Pass to the monster. The three. Jared Sollinger pulls it in. To back up your point about the Celtics being in close games, I mean, their point differential on the year was less than where you would expect it to be for a team that made the playoffs. I mean, it really gives you an idea of how many close games they played. Boston making a switch here. Browns checked in. Atlanta on D. 11-point game. The kid passes to Brown. No good. And Atlanta will come the other way. Young dishes to Bogdanovich. To the paint. Here's the monster. Happy to see that one drop, shooting a poultry two for nine. And when the size advantage is as big as it was there, I mean, that's exactly what he's supposed to do in that situation. Thomas a screen. And there's the pass to the kid. The shot's good. Brown making the play. 14 points for the kid. You can't afford to give him that kind of a look. Well, you know, he came off a good screen, but still, as a defender, you've got to do a better job of fighting over and through that. Here's Bogdanovich. 17 points for him last game against the Cavaliers in Cleveland. And he gets it to go. Six points for the Monster. That's how to orchestrate for your teammate. Terrific pass. Celtics leading by 10. Outside Thomas. This is it to the kid. Sollinger the screen. Sollinger is screen on Young. Down to five on the shot clock. On deep. Atlanta with the rebound. The Monsters got rebound number five here tonight. Here's Gallinari. That one wide left. You could tell he assumed he'd be able to beat the defensive coverage even though it was all over. Here's the kid defended by Young. Here's the kid. Gallinari with the rebound. Hey, I like creativity and the circus finish as much as anybody. But you better be sure you got a chance to make it. To the left side wing. Here's the screen. Shot off the pick. Bogdanovich, no luck. Boston's gone two of four from three-point range so far in the second quarter. Brown with it, and Young picks him up defensively. Thomas, the shot's good. Brown making the play. Thomas got the lead up to 12 now for Boston. Boy, they keep hammering away at him inside, forcing that ball into the paint. Smash mouth basketball. And Clark, it's a strategy that has served them well during the course of this first half. Atlanta calls timeout. He's been aggressive looking for a shot, but without much success. It might be time for him to take a step back and look to help the team in other ways. Completely new group for Atlanta. And then for Boston. Horford comes in for the Cobra. And Marcus Smart is subbed in for Isaiah Thomas. The Hawks trail by 12. Outside Williams. Zeller setting the pick for Williams. There's the feed to Zeller. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. It's on Jared Sullinger. Yeah, easy call. Yeah, you can hear the smack all the way over here where we are. And let's take a moment, guys, to get your take on the scoring so far for the Celtics. They've been making some really nice passes out there. Excellent passing. That could set the tone for the rest of the game. And also, it's been a positive to watch that they've attacked the paint offensively as well. It's really been about the balance that they've shown.
Well, so far for Coach Brad Stevens, the Celtics have had nothing but praise for their outstanding young coach. No surprise for those of us who know Brad. Uh, the team is really moving ahead in the rebuilding process, and he gets a lot of the credit for that. And part of the reason why the Celtics are ahead of schedule in the rebuild is because of Coach Brad Stevens. He has everyone on the same page. You know what? You, you talk around the league about Coach Stevens, and, and other coaches are just astounded by his work ethic. People around the league think he's already a top coach and could be one of the greats by the time he's done if he stays at the professional level. Here's Williams following the bucket by the Celtics to the inside and stolen by Horford. They get a hand on it. Here's Zeller. Goes up high for the two-handed dunk. Oh, quick hands <laughs> on the steal and then just mad hops on the slam. Great sequence for them defensively and Clark offensively. Well, one usually leads to the other, Kevin. That's just good, aggressive, attacking basketball at both ends. So it's Boston now following the bucket by the Hawks. Here's Brown. The Celtics have looked good at the line tonight. They're perfect in four attempts. Yeah, looking over their percentage on the season, I think they will be thrilled with the number in terms of their free throw percentage, 79. And that's a little better than they did last year from the free throw line. And he knocks down the first one. As we've gotten closer to halftime, their style has become more and more physical. Boy, it certainly appears to be the case, Greg. I mean, they've spent a lot of time at the foul line this quarter, and that's the result of attacking the rim and being physical. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. You look back last year, and the Hawks were incredible at home last season. Not a bad way to help unveil that beautiful statue of Dominique Wilkins in front of the stadium. Yeah, I mean, and so much went right for the Hawks. And adding that statue of Neek was the cherry on top. Very classy move from that organization. Williams can't hit. And that will increase their rebound advantage. They've definitely been winning that battle on the board. And you know what? No rebounds, no rings. And they've controlled the boards. And that's what's given them control of this game. Here's Horford. And down it goes, jamming that one home. You know, he's not your typical NBA center in terms of height, guys, but he plays as big as any of them, thanks to his incredible bounceability. And, you know, for the Hawks last season, they ended with a 35-6 record at home, and that was the best in the East and the second best in the NBA. Now here is Zephalosha. He hasn't scored yet, but I'm sure will change. Cutting into that lead a little bit. Way to finish. And the basket is still shaking. Oh, I mean, he has got power yes. in bunches on that two hand. Horford with a screen on Williams. Smart, wide open. He fires. Bangs home the trifecta. Smart's got himself on the board with three there. And for the Hawks, it was a good year to get the city. No, take that. It was a great year to get the city talking about basketball again. And Atlanta hasn't always rallied behind this team, but boy, did they show up more than usual last season. He dialed that one up from long distance. Six points for Lou Williams. And how about that? Responding to the three-pointer against them with a quick one of their own. Terrific little tay to tay going on right now back and forth here we go here's Horford banked in off the glass Horford's got his second bucket of the night another gap in the defense found there and they have really had their number today outside Williams picked by Zeller Williams kicks to Zeller nice ball movement here by Atlanta just four to shoot. Here's Capella. Sellinger with the rebound. With the success they've had rebounding the basketball, they're right where you'd expect them to be, firmly in control of this game. And, and no doubt about it, rebounding is an effort stat, folks. Oh! Putting on a show for these people. I cannot believe he pulled that <laughs> one out in the course of an actual game. Are you kidding me? I'll tell you what, Mama always said, if you got it, flaunt it. Let it fly. Let it fly. Mama said that, huh?
And through one half, it hasn't even been close. Celtics lead by 18. And now let's catch up with Doris Burke, who's standing by on the sideline. Doris? Well, David, obviously a very strong first half. What's been the philosophy of this team and how you mentally set your focus as a group to come out and play your best basketball? We just need to keep being consistent. And we're a team that's going to stay humble. That's not an issue with us. We're trying to play defense, rebound the basketball, and then just share the ball on offense and play as a team. David, it's been a complete change in culture. Thank you for your time. Over to you guys. Thank you, Doris, for that interview. And we'll see you back here after the break for the third quarter of basketball. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Welcome, everyone. We'll be taking a look back at what was clearly a one-sided first half of action. Ernie Johnson here with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. Boston found themselves in a close game in the first. They never trailed by more than three points, and it was neck and neck the entire period. They just exploded in the second quarter, grabbing the momentum and running with it. Basket after basket, and they played stingy defense. Now they've got a halftime lead that's going to be very difficult to erase. Kenny, what's your take on Boston so far? Well, they killed it on the glass. And they did it with high-level fundamentals, blocking out, maintaining position, and going up strong to the basket. If they board like that in the second half, this lead will continue to grow. And over to the big fella, your thoughts on the Hawks. Well, you live by the three and you die by the three. And today, <coughs> they're dying. <coughs> and as cold as they've been behind the arc, they keep firing from deep. What are you doing? I know they got a lot of ground to make up, but they can't continue with this game plan not working all right and that'll do it for us here we now take you back to the second half of our game kevin harlan ready with the call <laughs> 